So today's lesson is going to be very interesting because we are going to be talking about screen security. So we are going to be implementing the login page you see right here. And we also have a registration page as well. Currently in our application, we don't have this. So this is a completed application in GitHub. You can find it uh, right there in GitHub. So if you go to GitHub, you can find the completed application. That's please app version two, please app. Sorry, I'm going to search the repository. Play app uh, version 2. So this is a complete application. It seems to be private. Maybe just request for it. Maybe I'm going to make it public. So this play app uh, version 2 is what we have right now. So, um, so yeah, so we are going to be implementing uh, login and registration. And this is under Spring Security. Again, as you know, I've made the step by step in my website. So if you miss out anything, you have all the steps. Actually, this is the steps I'm going to follow in, in this tutorial. There is nothing new. The steps are laid out here and all the code snippets you are going to be using is laid out here as well. In the previous tutorial, we worked with Kubernetes deploying this application with MySQL to Kubernetes. And that's why if you look at my application, the properties file, you can see you can see that we still have the markups for the dynamic uh, values for database, password, username, and host. So because we're actually reading from a YAML file, this is the previous class, but today let's talk about uh, Spring Security. Again, please remember to subscribe to my channel. So click on the subscribe button. So you subscribe and you don't miss any update. When a new update comes in, you get it immediately. If you want, buy me a coffee. You see a link to buy me a coffee in my website. Uh, also in the description box of this video, please buy me a copy that kind of motivates me. And also leave me a comment, let me know how you benefited and also let me know if you have challenges following this uh, class, leave them in version two. So the first step we are going to be following says, um, add the dependencies. So there are two dependencies you need to add. Um, let me just make some room here. Let me increase the font here. Okay, so actually there are several steps. So let's follow them. So these two dependencies, we are going to copy them and add it to our pom.xml file. Once you add these dependencies to your pom.xml file, then this secure, Spring Security will be automatically added. And it means you need a login for you to access your application. So let's try it. I'm going to my pom.xml and um, I have all this stuff. Okay. So let me just go down and look for an empty space. Let's say I'm adding at the last part right here, Spring Security. Now, if I run this application, it's going to ask me for username and password before I can log in. So I'm running the application now. Okay. Um, okay, so let's see, I have an error here. So, oh yeah. So I need to change these markups we use when we were working with Kubernetes. I need to change this markup to the actual uh, password and username. So it's going to be root user. And uh, this is going to be root. And this is going to be, I think I can just copy it from where I have it and just replace. So let me just copy and replace, copy, and just replace the data source URL like this. All right, so I've added Spring Security to my class part, so I can just right click on the application and go to Maven and simply say reload the project. And then I'm going to run the application. Now, if I run this application and try to access this application, it's going to actually ask for password because now we've added Spring Security. But let's first make sure that the application starts up and Yes, it starts up. As you can see, it tells us our uh, generated security password. Actually, I will open another um, browser tab so you can have it open here. So I'm going to say HTTP uh, backslash backslash localhost at port 8080. Now it tells me login, <laughs> you see, because I simply added Spring Security to my class file. So this is the generated password you are going to use. So I'm going to simply copy this password and use it here. And then the username, I think it should be user, I think, user, okay? And sign in. 
So in this case, it lets me sign in because I ain't out the um, generated password. But we are not going to be using this password. We are going to be storing our passwords in MySQL database. Um, so, okay, so let's continue. So the next thing I would like us to do, we are going to create a folder to hold our uh, uh, files related to security. Actually, a package, we are going to be placing files related to security. So I'm going to create a package, I'm going to call it security. And I'm also going to create inside the resources, I'm going to create inside this template, I'm going to create uh, a folder that holds files related to security. And for now, we have just index. Now, inside this security uh, folder in the template, we need to add the login HTML and also the registration HTML. Now, these are HTML that you designed already. Uh, if you don't have it, I think you should have it somewhere in the template. If not, copy it from my repository online and use. So, I'm going to simply go to... I think I should have them, so I simply have to paste it. Okay, so I have the login and registration page. So if I go to um, the login page, for instance, this is a login page. It has login and uh, username and login and password fields uh, easy to understand. So this is um, the, um, the thing. This will be the input for the password, and this is the input for the username. Okay. Okay. And the form should direct to login slash to slash login. Okay, so I'm going to stop this from running. The registration page is also about the same. The form contains field for username, uh, for username, password, first name, and last name. I think so. You can take some time to take a look at it and see and get your head around it. But the basic HTML forms we are talking about. All right, so the next thing we are going to do, the step-by-step -step is here. There is a detailed step, step-by-step. Uh, -step. There's also a concise step-by-step. -step. So I have both of them open right here. Okay, once we've added the, the um, Spring Security, we've added the, the, uh, the forms for login and registration, we now need to create a user class. So if I go to Security Folder, I can create a new package. I'm going to call this package models. So inside these models, I'm going to place the user class. So I'm going to say new Java class. I'm going to call it R uh, apps. Okay, so having added these annotations, we also have to add the ID annotation. So it's coming from Java assistance. I'm going to simply take out this. Okay. Um, so these annotations, get all that, um, data annotation covers, um, um, makes it that we don't need to add the getters and the signers. Um, so we also need the ID to be auto increment. So to do that, I'm going to use as generated um, generated value and strategy is equal to generation type dot identity. So it's going to be auto increment. So we also need to add the user repository. So I'm going to go to repositories and create a new uh, a repository. Actually, it has to be an interface. So I'm going to choose interface and I'm going to call it user repository. And I'm going to annotate this with a repository annotation. And this is going to be an interface that extends JPA repository for the user class and the ID uh, type should be integer and then I'm going to just import this. Okay. Alright, so um so we are going to write a method find by username. So I'm going to say um so this means that so we want to find the user we can specify the username to uh, find this user. Okay, so let's move on to the last part. So, okay, so this area. So, we need to configure authentication provider. Um, there are a number of steps we can follow to configure authentication provider. So, what we can do is to create, let me give one second. So, we will use the app security config we created. Um, so, we will have to create a security config file. So inside the security folder, I'm going to create a new file called app security config. 
So I don't actually, I can actually create it outside the security folder. So I'm going to call it application security config. So to save time, I'm simply going to copy the content of this file and just paste it. We also need the user details and the user, user details service and the authentication provider. I'm going to also copy and paste. So you read through my website and you can see explanation uh, details of the meaning of all of this. So because I, need, I don't want to spend time to explain this, but I think it should be clear so far. Okay, um, so, so this is where we are, so create the service layer. So we need to create the, now we need to create the user details service interface. So I'm going to create a class called my user details service. Add the, in the new class dialog box, add, add the user details interface. So inside the service, I'm going to create a new uh, class. Um, it's going to be my user details service. And this class will implement uh, user details service. So I'm going to say implement user details service. Um, it's all, it also go, it is also going to have the add service annotation and we are going to override um, this loads by username. Okay. All right. So the contents of the um, implementation of this load by username is going to simply take a username, which is a string, and it's going to fetch um, the user details from the repository. So I'm going to simply copy the content as well and paste it so that we don't spend all the time. So this new user is going, with, it's going to use the repository to find a user by username and return that user. So it means that we need to auto-wire the repository here as well. Auto-wire private uh, user repository uh, user user repository, okay. Okay, so this user principal, we actually uh, have not created it, and we are going to create it a little later. Okay, so we are done with this, uh, my user details service, so, uh, so the procedure is here. I think I'm being a little too fast. We now need to, need to create a class that implements the user details service. So I'm going to create a new class inside the models package. And this class, I'm going to call it um, user principal. So I'm going to call it new user principal, but actually to save time, I'm going to copy it and paste, and then I'm going to explain it to you. So I'm going to copy it from where I have it and simply paste it into this place. The explanation is already given in my website, so take some time to read uh, the explanation of this class. Okay, so I okay, so this is the content of this file. So simply get it and paste it. You actually don't need to worry too much about it. It simply contains operations that can be performed on a user. For instance, get password, get username, get account expired, and so on. So this is it, guys. <laughs> I'm done with it. So. I'm We've actually added Spring Security to this application, and it's as simple as this. Now, when we create, we can actually create a new user using register, but I think we are missing out two things. First, let me just import this first. Uh, so this will be string user name. Okay. So this is going to extend web security configurer adapter, all right? Okay, so when the user goes to slash login or slash register, it should load the login and registration page. So we are going to add these controller methods uh, to actually display either the login page or the registration page. So I'm going to go to the controller and add a new Java class. I'm going to call it user controller. And I'm going to annotate it with our controller annotation. Okay. 
And now I'm going to also copy the content so I don't. Okay, so we link these endpoints. We for the login it goes to security slash login. For register it goes to security slash register. Um, and for the index it goes to security index. And these are the three files we are linking to. Okay. So let's test out this application. Please take some time to read through my website. Um, it's going to clarify all the bits and pieces of uh, Spring Security. So I'm going to run this now and let's see what we have. Now we expect it to uh, run and display the login page. In this case, we are going to try to create a new user. So it starts up running. And let's go to assess it at port 8080. And then say HTTP local host at port 8080. Uh, it says wine level. So let's go fix this. By the way, the, the template actually exists. So I'm going to kind of reload this uh, project. And let's see if this fixes it. I'm going to say Maven reload. And I'm going to run it one more time. So at this point, I'm going to use here. So if I refresh this page and it says it does not exist, by the way, uh, it exists. So I'm going to simply close and reopen this application. So sometimes to solve a problem like this, you simply close and reopen the application. So Tomcat started, started again in port 8080, so I'm going to come here and then refresh. Now you can see that it displays the login page for us. But now, this username and password, uh, let's see, it works, okay, because I already have it in the database. But what you can do is to try to uh, go to the sign-up page, create a new user, and then try to log in with this new user detail. So this is the end of Spring Security for now. We are going to be talking about roles, privileges, and uh, role-based authentication later on, after now. But for now, this is the basic Spring Security. At least we can log in now using a login page. Let's now check what next we have to do. The next part is JPA auditing. And then we are going to come back to security after we complete auditing. I would like to stop here and I would like to thank you for viewing. Please remember to subscribe to my channel if you're not subscribed and leave me a comment if this has been informative for you. If you have any challenges whatsoever, please do let me know via a comment. Connect with me in my social network profile. Feel free to buy me a coffee. Uh, the link is there and this way you can support me and motivate me to continue making these lessons. I remain kind and the genius and I'm always there for you.